It took everything they had as the Titans come to the Mile High City and for the first time in 33 years, get it done again. In the 52nd meeting between these rivals, Jacksonville comes to Nashville and sees the Titans get it done again. Titans trailed here today 24 to 12, and yet they decide to pick themselves up, dust themselves off, and go win a game to get to 3 and 0. 3 and 0. Who next? We welcome you to the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. I'm Mike Keith, joined by the head coach of the Tennessee Titans, Mike Vrabel. As the Titans come off a surprise by weekend caused by the COVID outbreak on the football team, Titans still stand 3-0. and And Mike, as we see this new week dawn, we certainly hope things are going better for the Titans. First and foremost, let me ask you about the health of the players and the staff Hopefully, everybody is bouncing back. Yeah, I think they are, and I appreciate you asking. Uh, That's always our first concern is the the health and safety of our players and their family and our staff and their families. Um, For the most part, I think everybody's doing well, uh, improving, uh, and and hopefully we can continue to to put this thing behind us. Mike, outside of the, the concern for the health of the players and the staff, what has been the biggest challenge in all of this for you as the head coach? Well, just making sure that uh, we're doing everything that we can to continue uh, the protocols and, and the safety uh, in which we, you know, address this this issue of, of COVID and a, and a pandemic and make sure that we can operate and do our jobs and function uh, but keep them safe and, and healthy. That's We have to continue to do that when we enter back into the building and, and make sure that, that we take the approach that that every person that we come in contact with is infected and, and take that um, seriously and make sure that the, what happened here uh, doesn't happen again. All of your meetings from here will be virtual. So how will you form a practice day knowing that you certainly go on the field together, but that you can't meet in person. How will that shape your plan? Well, we'll always have a schedule that's got the, the player's best interests in mind. And so, you know, there's going to be a lot required of them and asked of them as far as coming over and testing, point of care test to be able to come into the building, um, the number of people that are permitted in the weight room at any given point or the training room and being mindful of the cafeteria. And so, um, we are, um, you know, we're working through that schedule, uh, and, and going to do what's best for the players and then try to make sure that they're engaged and stimulated, um, through the zoom meetings virtually Titans head coach, Mike Vrabel, the Mike Vrabel show. When we come back, it's your Coca-Cola six pack, six of the guys who've stuck out in the Titans three and O start. We'll talk about those players with the head coach next. Stay with us. Mike Vrabel show presented by Coca-Cola continues with the six pack. Mike Vrabel's six pack. Usually we have six plays, but to start off with here, because there was no game this past weekend, we're going to talk about six players who played key roles in helping the Titans start three and zero. And Mike, we've got to start off with your quarterback, Ryan Tannehill, who already has six touchdown passes. Well, let's hope he can continue to improve on that. I feel like he's taking care of the football. Uh, it's been efficient. Um, I know he'd like to have some throws back, but, you know, for the most part, I think he's got us headed in the right direction. He hits the throw to Adam Humphreys, one of four touchdown passes against Jacksonville. 
maybe the biggest step forward in the past game at Minnesota was being able to hit the deep shots once again, which was a key down the stretch last year. Yeah, that was something we were able to move the ball down the field. And, you know, we had a lot of catch and run plays uh, last year that moved down and made it look big. You know, maybe hit one against Oakland, but, you know, that we have to be able to do that. We have to be able to hit the ball and throw the ball over people's head at times. Uh, and that was something that was great to see whenever we were in Minnesota. All right, let's talk about one of the receivers making things happen for Ryan Tannehill. Tight end Jonu Smith, who has continued his outstanding play from the end of 2019. He certainly has. Uh, you know, there's players that work hard, but I don't think anybody works harder than Jonu. Uh, he's right up there at the top, uh, always looking to improve. So, you know, he's, he's got a really good skill set. He can run. Uh, he's been able to go up and attack the, the ball, uh, use his catch radius. As you can see there, he's not letting the ball get into his body. Uh, even when he's contested catches, I think that that's something that he built a lot of confidence with uh, towards the end of uh, last year as well. Why is he one of the most effective red zone targets at tight end in the NFL, Mike? Well, I mean, I think he, you know, those are qualities that we talk about with his size and his speed uh, to be able to, to run routes and get open against uh, corners or safeties, excuse me, uh, linebackers. And then again, you, you see that those tight windows and some of those throws down there, those catches, you're going to see him go and frame the football and go and attack it wherever the football is. We go from number 81 to number 84. How about a little Corey Davis so far in 2020? Yeah, we just got to keep moving and progressing. You know, started off um, really well in, uh, in Denver and, and then just got to keep up that consistency. You know, it's helped us well. And again, we need him in a run game and, and there he is in the play action pass game. We've got to put that ball away and then not switch it here in traffic. Those are things we're going to continue to harp on. Uh, we, we've taken care of the football, which has allowed us to, even when we're not at our best, uh, win, win these games. The next man didn't play this weekend, and yet he's still the third leading rusher in the National Football League. I'm talking about Derrick Henry. Well, he's, he knows that we're going to lean on him heavily. Um, it was good to see him get in the end zone here the last time we played. Uh, and I know that we're going to start we're going to start breaking some and you know, he's been running well for us, and, and we have to do a better job of blocking, and, and he can improve everywhere. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're going to count on him and lean on him heavily. Let's turn to defense now, and let's talk about another Alabama man, linebacker Rashawn Evans, who had the big fumble recovery and return against Minnesota. Well, that's, uh, you, you know, we had a little situation there early in Denver. Uh, he, he entered the uh, – he exited the, the game early. But uh, he has been active. He, he loves this team. He loves this defense. And, you know, we got to play better defensively. But uh, we've been able to get some turnovers. And, you know, you run to the ball, good things happen. And Rashawn plays with great effort and, and a great toughness. I know you respect Dave McGinnis's opinion. He feels like your safety, Kenny Vaccaro, is maybe one of your underrated heroes so far in the 2020 season. Tell me what you think about Kenny's play to this point. Well, he throws his body around and, you know, again, we, we all can, can improve, but uh, Kenny's throwing his body around and, and he, he does a lot for us. So we ask him to blitz and, you know, we ask him to cover and he's down in there and run support. So, you know, just that's the versatility that we, that we like. And, and again, I love his attitude. I love his preparation and, and, and what he brings to it each and every day. You mentioned the versatility, the fact that he and Kevin Byard played together as such a pair has given your defense an added element as well. Well, they got a lot of comfort with each other. They they communicate. They can just look at each other and, and use eye contact and hand signals uh, to be able to communicate and, and, and run our defense. So the, the more familiarity that everybody has, I think the better that, that we'll all be. That's the six-pack presented by Coca-Cola. We'll tell you the Rackley mm -hmm. Roofing Tough Titan comes up later in the show. That's going to be Malcolm Butler. But up next, it's Delta Dental's Guess the Titan. As we continue oh, yeah. on, oh yeah, as we continue on the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Delta Dental, can you guess this Titan? The Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. The Delta Dental segment, one I think you're going to hit this time. I think I can handle this one. Uh, I remember the hat. I do. 
I'm going to go with Stephen Gaskowski. Stephen Gaskowski is correct. Looks like I mean, him. Th this is what this game has gotten to. You have to show them to me a second time for me to actually <laughs> get them correct. Well, talking about Stephen is probably better than the game itself because you're talking about the AFC Special Teams Player of the Month. What a comeback from his start, and what a performance against Minnesota. Absolutely. Well documented how he started the season. Not what any of us had envisioned or wanted, but uh, being a professional uh, and, and being the type of player that he is, he, he got it corrected, and, and we also helped him out a little bit, I think. I think we protected better and got that stuff cleaned up. Um, and then really single-handedly won that Minnesota game, you know, making three kicks over 50 yards. Um, you know, we needed him, we had to have him, and he came through. Your former teammate, too. Is that fun, coaching a former teammate like that? Yeah, I mean, I don't really coach Steven much. It's like I don't coach Kern or, Brent, you know what I mean, Bo. Like, those guys are specialists. And, you know, what, what am I going to tell Brett Kern on how to kick the ball 50 yards on the sideline? Like, it's out of my control, and those guys handle it very well. Um, you know, I, I used to, anytime that the kickers miss, I always walk over there. I said, well, is it a bad snap or a bad hole? You know, just always looking to try to break the break the ice a little bit because, it, you know, it's never the kicker's fault, so you're either going to blame it on the snap or the <laughs> hole. That's usually my go-to line. All right. Well, let's keep Steven involved in the program here as we're going to do the Bridgestone Clutch Performance play of the first three games. And it's actually a sequence of plays at the end of the first half against Jacksonville. They kick off after scoring, and Joshua Kalu makes a play on what was supposed to be a little line drive squib kick. Yeah, they're trying to take some time off there, and they try to squib it. Josh is able to get in front of it knock it down, get in front of it like a shortstop, had plenty of time over there and make the play, cover it up. We had, uh, you know, enough time to go into down, down, timeout mode. We had a timeout left. Uh, we got the ball in the middle. Uh, Anthony Ferkser went down with a good protection, good throw, uh, went down, down, called timeout, and then uh, Steven was able there to, uh, to knock it through for what would be three huge points in that game. In a game you won by three points. That's – the type of complimentary football you always want to see out of, in that case, your offense and your special teams. Well, we just need more of it. You know I mean? It starts with, you know, the defense did get a stop. They, they forced uh, Jacksonville to, to kick a field goal, you know, in that two minute drive, Jacksonville tried the hard squib. So, you know, in my mind, we erased the three points that they were able to put up there. And uh, it was in, in effect complimentary. After the break, we'll have the Rackley Roofing Tough Titan as we're going to talk to one of the toughest, Malcolm Butler, and you'll hear the comments from the head coach on number 21. This is the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. He needs two yards to keep this game moving on. You see what you're made of when you go through something tough. Steady rainfall. And yeah, it's been a tough year. But Tennesseans are built for this. Grit passed down through generations. We look for it. We like it that way. Football is back, baby. Tough. Tennessee tough. Glad you're joining us for the Mike Vrabel Show presented by Coca-Cola. Malcolm Butler is a veteran player on this football team. He plays the cornerback position. And Mike Vrabel, he is uh, a guy you like to watch play because he plays the game the way you want to see it played all the time. Malcolm, like most of us, isn't perfect, uh, but he plays with an effort and a toughness and a competitive spirit you know, that I admire as a coach. Uh, he, he's never going to give up. He's going to try to compete, uh, and, and he does that. And so... He's a great uh, mentor to um, all our players, but especially those young DBs. Yeah, Fulton and Jackson certainly look to him right off the bat, don't they? Well, I think they can emulate his effort. You know, that if you make a mistake, do it going 100 miles an hour. Uh, you never beat on a play unless you give up. And, uh, you know, they're DBs. They're gonna, people are going to complete some passes on them. 
you know, you, you, you hope that they're challenging and, uh, you know, we get, we're going to start winning some more of these balls in the, in the in second half of the season as we, we finish here and, and move past this bye week. He's the pride of Vicksburg, Mississippi. He is a two-time Pro Bowler, and he is a Titan starter at cornerback. This week, he's the Rackley Roofing Tough Titan, Malcolm Butler. And Butler is hurting. Butler holding his wrist or his hand is writhing in pain, and the Titans training staff is going to have to come get him. Let me ask you about that injury. Based on the fact that you missed the second half of the year, you'd never been hurt like that before in your career, had you? No, sir. That was the first time I ever, you know, missed a game or, you know, had a, a major injury. So it was a lot of adversity, but I'm back now and ready to roll. So I want to know, when you got hurt last year, I mean, your grades through the first eight games had been fantastically high, and everybody was talking about Malcolm Butler's on his way to another Pro Bowl. Were you playing the best football of your career when you got injured last year? I believe so, yes, sir. I know I was. You know, I had an off year the year before that, and I wanted to prove to my teammates, myself, and, and, and my coaches in the city of Nashville. I thank God that I got another opportunity to do it this year. Blitz coming. Cousins under pressure, fires downfield for Jefferson. It's batted away. Nice job with the left hand by Butler. Cousins throws downfield for Thielen, and it is batted away. Again, Butler at the last minute gets in there and saves a touchdown as it looked like Thielen had a score. That's two great plays by Butler back to back. How can the defense be better in 2020 than it was in 2019? Just take it up a notch. You can't live off last year. Nothing in the past is going to help you. So communication, believing in each other, working hard, practicing hard, studying the film, studying your opponents, and you know just doing whatever it takes to win. You're 30 now, so you've done this for a while. You've seen it. When you see a young guy come in, what's the most important thing you can get across to him quickly to help him be an important part of the secondary right away? Just being a pro and, and you know, you come in here first round, you got high expectations and just communicate with your teammates. You here to play football and that's that's all you can do. Be a good teammate, play football, respect your elders and uh, <laughs> Chris is a pretty cool, quiet guy. We are so glad you're back and back at it, playing great ball when you were dinged up last year. An important part of this team. Malcolm Butler, thanks for joining us. Yes, sir. Thank you. Time for Mike Vrabel's Nissan Keys to Success against the 4-0 Buffalo Bills. You want to start with special teams because they have a Pro Bowl return man in Andre Roberts. Yeah, this is, uh, this is a guy that's done it for a long time. Uh, he, he's leading the league in punt returns and kickoff returns, so it's going to be critical that we handle him, uh, that we're punting the ball well, that we're getting great coverage out of our gunners. He's averaging over 12 yards of punt return and up to 34 yards of kickoff return. So he's obviously going to be a key to the game on special teams for us. Key number two for the Tennessee Titans is be efficient on offense, and that means no negative plays. Well, we can't sit there and play second and 10, second and 12. You know, a third of Buffalo's plays against them are for no gain or for negative yardage. And uh, we just can't play the game behind the chains. And so if we can stay efficient on first and second down, you know, we will be where we need to be. And then you say eliminate X plays on defense. What does that mean, Mike? Well, it's those runs over 15 and passes over 20 that change field position, change momentum. There's been too many of them uh, in the first three games that we've played. You know, there's too much good defense in there to, to be um, overshadowed by 10 or 12 plays a game that amount to 250 yards. That, that's not going to be good enough, and it's not good enough. There's too many good snaps in there, you know, for us to, to be able to build around if we can just eliminate these explosive gains. Is it a bigger challenge because Josh Allen is the quarterback on the other side on Sunday? Well, it's always a big challenge, and, and he's, he's a guy that can keep plays alive. He's had a few of them himself run the football. Uh, he keeps plays alive. He's, he's more comfortable completing the deep ball this year. Seems like Stefan Diggs has become 
uh, somebody that, that will go down and get the ball downfield. He completed a few of them. So th this is going to be a challenge for us um, because it's the next challenge with the Bills. How exciting will it be for this team to get back on the field at Nissan Stadium Sunday? I think they'll be ready to play. I think by the time the game day rolls around, these guys will be excited and ready to go. Well, Mike, we look forward to it for certain. Remember, the Titans and the Bills Sunday at Nissan Stadium. Kickoff is set for 12.02. We invite you to listen to all of it on our flagship station in Nashville. It's Titans Radio, 104.5 The Zone. We're on the air with Titans Countdown beginning at 11 a.m. We hope you'll join us for all of it. For the head coach, Mike Vrabel, Mike Keith says thanks for watching The Mike Vrabel Show, presented by Coca-Cola.